So as a follow-up to our previous video, we'll go ahead and take a look at naming alkenes and alkynes. Pretty much the same thing as we've seen before. So we've got our summary of rules on our left that kind of help us go through and approach these. Uh, if you'd like to take a moment, you can pause now uh, and take a look at it on your own. Uh, otherwise, we'll go ahead and move on. So our first approach is to identify our main chain in both. I'm going to start with the halogen containing compound. We have our main chain here, which is going to be one, two, three, four, five carbons. So I'm looking at a pent. To figure out the ending, I'm going to have to look at the hybridization within that structure. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, and we'll notice that we have that triple bond. Well, the triple bond oops, gets named after the that appropriate ending. So we'll go through and name this a pentine. Uh, depending on what we see within the name, we may go through and decide to number, uh, insert the number in front of the ein, or we could just as easily place it in front of the pent, again, kind of depending on the system. Next part is identify our substituents. Uh, we really only have the chlorine here, uh, which we would name a chloro. Whoops, chloro. The last part is we need to identify our numbering system. Well, our highest priority functional group was the alkyne, which means that's going to start our numbering system. We'll put that at position 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We'd end up with a 1 pentine, and our chloro is located at the 5 position. Running it all together, 5 chloro uh, pentine. You can end up dropping the 1 because the 1 will be uh, assumed in the name. We take a look at the other structure. Got to be a little bit careful because if we go through and highlight this as our main chain, it's probably the longest carbon chain. However, it doesn't contain the highest priority functional group. The highest priority functional group in this case is going to be our alcohol. So we're going to need to go up <coughs> this direction. You may notice that we could have branched uh, to avoid including that alkene. We could have potentially branched out this direction or branched... Uh, we wouldn't have branched that way. We could have branched out that other direction. The reason not, the alkene is a higher priority functional group than the alkane, so we'll shift to include the alkene. Uh, as an important aspect, it can be extremely helpful to circle in that main chain because then you can name appropriately your substituents. Within this, we've got one, two, three, four, five carbons, so we're again at a pent. <clears throat> Identifying the hybridization. Our hybridization is that alkene, so we'd go through with our dash specifying our location. There's our ene. It is not, however, the highest uh, functional group in this case. We have the alcohol also present, which again, not officially responsible for technically at this stage in the game, for those of you in my 235 class. Uh, but our alcohol is higher priority than our alkene. This means we have to change the ending of the ene to incorporate the alcohol, so we end up dropping in our numbering location for the alcohol in the OL. Because the alcohol is higher in priority than the alkene, the alcohol will go at position 1. This then means that the alkene will go at 1, 2, 3, being the first location it shows up. A lot of work just went into that <clears throat> without even looking at our substituents. We now have our substituents. We have three of them. We have an ethyl, another ethyl, and we have a methyl. The two ethyls can be condensed to become diethyl. Uh, if we go alphabetically and start dropping this into our, our naming system, we'd have our diethyl, our location for then our methyl, uh, pent 3 ene one all The methyl was located at position... where is that? 1, 2, 3, 4, it looks like. So we put in our 4 for our methyl. The diethyl, well the ethyl showed up at position 2, and we had one showing up at position 3. Must specify them both. So there's our completed name for our alkene. 
So kind of straightforward, hopefully nothing kind of jumps out at you. Um, however, our alkenes have this kind of added issue with them. When we're looking at nomenclature, what we're trying to do is identify our compounds that are not the same when placed under normal conditions. And there's all sorts of nasty things with that. Not the same if you go back to isomers and all that fun stuff. So we're saying not identical, um, but technically not different either. And then our normal conditions that we have to watch out for. If we looked at these two structures, these are butane structures with the exact same name and there's no variation within the name. Um, but they wouldn't match our superimposability rule as is until we did a bond rotation. So our normal conditions means under normal thermal conditions do we get rotations. In this case, yes we would for the single bonds. The added caveat <clears throat> or the added issue with our alkenes is we don't get rotations. So why does that cause a problem? Well, if we go and look at the two structures that we've got drawn up top, we have a butene with a double bond at the 2 position. The other one, we have a 2-butene. Again, so the name comes out the same. This becomes a bit problematic. We have to have a different name so that we can appropriately match this. Okay, And what we talked about in class is that we could reference these as cis and trans, or more appropriately, Z and E when it comes to nomenclature. To do that, we have to first be able to identify some things. So number one, when trying to deal with your cis and trans system, or uh, Z and E, is cut your structure in half perpendicular to the bond axis. So if we color code here, step one, we cut in half perpendicular. And we'll star the highest priority atom on each side of the double bond, which we'll call step two. So if we look at the right half, I'm comparing carbon to hydrogen. Well, carbon is a higher priority than hydrogen. We'll discuss that in a second, but at very least they're different. <clears throat> if we look at the left half, we've got the same situation. Our carbon is a higher priority than hydrogen, so we'd star that. Our last step is to cut the structure parallel to our bond axis, and then look at where the stars are. Stars are on the same side we've got a cis double bond, which is often more correctly referred to in nomenclature as a Z. So things to help you remember that, on the same side is cis, and then for whatever reason, uh, people seem to remember tran and E being associated with each other a little bit more appropriately. If we sneak over the other side and do the same comparison, our first step cut perpendicular, whoops, wrong color, sorry we cut perpendicular to our bond axis, we star our higher priority groups, we cut parallel to our bond axis, <clears throat> and then we look at our stars, see where they're located. Okay, So I'm going to give you a second, go through and try and name that lower left hand structure. So pause the video and name it. Now that you've done that and unpaused it, we want to go through and do our full naming process. So I'll go in kind of black color until we deal with our EZ. We want to identify our longest carbon chain. Uh, and this actually brings up an interesting point. So there's a carbon chain. And here's a carbon chain. Both of those result in the same number of carbons in our carbon chain, right? One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, yeah. So which one of those is more appropriate? Well, that decision ultimately comes down to the people of the IUPAC Nomenclature Council, and we would have hoped that they would have come back and said, well, both are equivalent, and we're wrong. Uh, when we go through to number or identify our longest carbon chain, if we come up with a tie, the tie goes, or the winner of that, goes to the one that has the most substituents. That means the one in red is technically the wrong longest carbon chain because we have one, two, three substituents off the black one. Okay, uh, and I said I was going to color code, so let's keep that all black. When we go through to put our name, four carbons, in our main chain, I'm going to try and write this so I don't run out of space. We have a butte uh, with that alkene floating in there. Whoops. Couldn't leave our dash so we can specify the location. 
because there isn't a higher priority functional group than an alkene, we can end with the ENE. In our numbering, we would start 1, 2, 3, 4. We want to start our numbering with giving our highest priority group the lowest number, so we could call it a but one ene Again, the 1 is not necessary. <clears throat> As for naming the substituents, we have a chloro, we have an ethyl, and we have a methyl. The chloro is located at position 1, the ethyl is located at position 2, 3 located at, or sorry, the methyl located at position 3. According to our alphabet, we would end up with 1 chloro, 2, assuming my alphabet's okay, ethyl, and then 3 methyl but one ene Okay, and now we've got kind of our name. However, this does not take into consideration this whole cis-trans issue. So, with all of this stuff now overlaid, I'm going to go through and clean some of that up because we've got our name now identified. We'll go through and cut our structure in half perpendicular to the bond axis. We'll star our higher priority groups on each half. So hydrogen versus chlorine. Chlorine comes in as our higher priority group. When we look at the other half, we're comparing carbon to carbon, and now we run into to a dilemma. They have the same priorities, so which one wins? Okay, well, someone had to come up with a rule set for that, and that rule set is going to end up telling us that that top carbon wins. And we'll talk what that rule set is in just a second. We'll cut parallel to our bond axis. The stars are on the same side. This means that we would be looking at a cis structure. Because we have, <clears throat> or because cis and trans are really not the greatest nomenclature system, what we would need to do is append the Z, which is our nomenclature system for cis, to our name. Now the question becomes is where do we put it? Typically we would put it out front. So we'd start our name as Z, 1-chloro, 2-ethyl, 3-methyl, but one ene Thankfully I picked a nice short name. Uh, but now the issue is, well, where was that Z? Okay, what was it applying to? In this case, with only one double bond, it's relatively obvious it's applying to the only double bond present. To make sure we're extra clear, we can specify the location in front. We'll typically drop parentheses around this, and then you might have checked me on this. I believe we follow that with a dash. And then we put our whole name together. <clears throat> and that is now our complete nomenclature system for our cis and trans. So back to our issue of this idea of priorities. How do we understand our priorities? Well, this falls back on the set of rules known as the Kahn Ingold Prelog rules. So what we'll have to go through and do is assign priorities to each substituent based on atomic mass. In the cis trans system, we don't really care about this 1, 2, 3, 4. All we'd really be looking at is 1 and 2. Because all we are evaluating is our highest priority on each half of the double bond. Uh, as far as deciding what makes a higher priority, it is a higher atomic mass. Okay? And the biggest thing to pick out of this is that term atomic. It is not the size of the substituent attached we're just saying the atom attached. If there's no difference, we'll move to the next atom in the chain and we'll continue to re the, repeat this process as necessary uh, until we have found a difference. Okay? If we don't find a difference, well then we don't have different priorities. We can't worry about uh, cis and trans. So we can ignore the chiral for the moment. We're talking about cis and trans here. Okay, or our Z E nomenclature system. One kind of extra caveat that always tends to mess with students' brains is this idea of multiple bonds. Um, when you encounter a multiple bond, you will treat each pi bond as a phantom sigma bond. This is a trickier concept, so it's something we'll actually leave for the lecture to make sure you can ask questions as we run through it. Um, that said, go ahead and take a minute and see what you can do with ranking the priorities of these three groups. So what we're saying is that these groups are, say, attached at position A versus B. Okay, so we want to go through 
and rank these from highest priority to lowest priority. So take your minute. Now that you've done it, we'll go through and evaluate. We are comparing that atom to that atom to that atom to that atom and try and decide on our priority ar arrangement. Okay. We'll remember its highest atomic mass. Chlorine is the highest atomic mass. So it would be number one as our highest priority. Oxygen would be number two. And then we run into an issue here. Okay. To decide three, we're comparing carbon to carbon. And really there's no difference in atomic mass between carbon, so we'd have to extend further outward. As an added wrinkle within this, okay, if we look at that first carbon structure, we actually have multiple bonds there. So at this stage, what we can jump out ahead and say is, well, if we look at the one on the left, um, there are more carbons ultimately bound around that structure. We have one carbon, two carbons, whereas in the other case, we'd be comparing one carbon to a hydrogen. Well, carbon is a higher priority than a hydrogen, so that would place our phenyl substituent as number three and our propyl as number four. <clears throat> the more appropriate response to that is looking at that fant or at that carbon and saying what things are attached. Well, we've got a carbon, we have a carbon, and then we have this phantom carbon that represents the pi bond. So the one we've labeled three, our very first structure here, has three carbons attached, whereas in four, so if we write out what things are attached, we have carbon, 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 whereas in four, we have carbon, hydrogen, hydrogen. When looking at our sequence, the carbons are equivalent in mass, so we don't see a difference, but the carbon versus the hydrogen is our difference. First carbon takes priority. Okay. General rule of thumb that can be dicey to use because it doesn't always work. Uh, the less hybridized, typically the higher priority. Not always the case, but under most circumstances that works out pretty well. So let's take a look at a couple more here. <clears throat> um, one of those, I believe we already named, didn't we? Yeah, we went through and named that. Uh, and we even, actually, I don't think we looked at the cis trans, did we? Yeah, we did. Uh, so we said this was our higher priority, this was our higher priority. Those were on the same side of our double bond. So when we go through to name, we would end up, uh, yeah, I did that right. Uh, when we go through to name, we'd end up calling that a Z structure, because our higher priority groups are on the same side of the double bond. And the next structure over, since you've already had a, a chance to go through and name this, we've got our longest carbon chain being through here, nice and non-linear. Way to go, Mike, being a mean, evil person. One, two, three, four, five. So we've got, again, a pentene. In this case, I'm going to put the numbering out front. We have a two pentene. Just as valid as putting pent two in. Uh, our substituents, we have two methyl groups. So we have a dimethyl. And those are located at positions two and three. Okay. And then that would be the end of the name. And they say, well, what about this whole cis trans thing? Well, remember, we only use cis trans if we have to, or our Z and E system if we have to. So our first step cut perpendicular to the pi bond. If we're comparing carbon to carbon, no difference, so we go one atom further away, carbon to hydrogen. There's our difference. So the rightmost side is our higher priority. We go to the other side, we have a carbon to carbon, no difference. If we continue all the way out, we won't find a difference. Well, if there's no difference, I can't star one side or the other, which then means when I cut parallel, are the stars plural on the same side? No, obviously, because there isn't another star there. So I can't name this one cis and trans. Okay? So, 
Here's your last little practice on your nomenclature Z and E. Again, take a minute. I believe we got a pause here. Uh, hit that pause, and then we'll come back and look at the answers. So you should have been able to pick out this much of the name. We've got an extra couple issues here. Number one, we have two double bonds, so it's a simple fix. We would go hex, and I believe we need the uh in this case, just because it sounds better, but I could be wrong. Hexa di, because there's two double bonds, diene. Our double bonds show up positions two and four. So now that we've got the bulk of our name down, we'll have to deal with our EZ system. Uh, and we have to look at both double bonds. So we split the first one in half. We look at the groups, carbon versus hydrogen. Whoops, that's an H. Carbon versus hydrogen. Pretty much a, a clear win there. So at the 4 position, we have a, what did we say that was? Cis, same side. We're looking at Z. We should put that a little bit closer to the rest of our name. So we have a 4Z. And if we now clean that all up and move to our other double bond, cut in half again. Go through to star, bromine versus carbon, bromine wins. The other side, carbon versus carbon, whoop, we got a tie. This is again where that phantom carbon can come into play, everybody's least favorite. We're looking at a carbon bound out to quote unquote two other carbons, whereas our bottom carbon is only bound out to one. That means the top carbon has our higher priority, so we can star that one. We cut parallel for the double bond. Our stars are on opposite sides of that line. Opposite sides means trans or E. So we'd be looking at the E. Make sure we've got that comma in there to separate those two positions. And we have 2E, 4Z, 2-bromo, 3-ethyl, 2,4-hexadiene, maybe even hexdiene. And that would be our full name on that. So hopefully that gets you enough practice to be able to go through and do some nomenclature of cis and trans on your own.